Still plenty of time for reaction for the Duke men's basketball team. Where the guys are headed after the NBA draft. And Duke head coach John Shire, is he being disrespected a little bit out there on the recruiting trail? We'll talk about that and more on today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils. Let's get right to it. Here we go. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. It's so great to have you here with us on Wednesday, June 29th, 2022. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. My name again is JJ Jackson. Therefore, my Twitter handle at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore would greatly appreciate you giving us a follow over there. If you're watching us on YouTube, thanks for doing that. Like this video, turn on the bell, the push notifications to know when a new episode is uploaded. We're in the middle of summertime, three episodes a week right now. Uh, In a couple of weeks, we'll jump back to five days a week for Locked On Blue Devils, your only daily podcast talking all things Duke athletics. On today's show, I'm very thrilled to welcome in a good buddy of mine, Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham, happens to stop back by our program today, and we'll welcome in Kevin now, who joins us here on this Wednesday. Kevin, the time is always greatly appreciated. How are you, my friend? I'm good, JJ. How are you? Summer's going well? It is. It is going well. Uh, This is always one of my favorite times of year. I'm a big NBA draft guy, as every Duke fan is, I think, because you're so excited to see where all of these guys are going to be starting their NBA career. Let me start there. Big picture, what do you think of the draft for the Duke guys? I thought it kind of went as expected. I mean, maybe... Apollo going number one wasn't expected, but everyone thought he would go top three. I know um, a lot of Duke supporters and non-Duke supporters thought he was the best player in the draft. I thought he was the best player in the draft as well. Um, And the Magic, I think, make the right decision by taking him one overall. But as for the other four guys that got picked, I think everything went typically uh, according to plan. I thought A.J. Griffin slid a little bit. That could have been due to his injury, his previous injury history before he got to Duke, all the knee injuries he had in high school. Uh, and then Trevor Keels as a second round pick, I think, is that's what uh, a lot of people expected. Yeah, you take a look at the Paulo angle in this, which a lot of people were kind of shocked at the very end. I know the day before the draft, we see the lines shift a little bit in Las Vegas, and maybe people started to figure some things out. And then Woj tweets that morning that no, nothing's changed. Jabari one, Chet two, uh, Paulo three. And then an hour before it gets going, hey, maybe Paulo is going to go number one. And ultimately, the Magic decide to make that a thing. Paulo Banquero has been introduced in Orlando. He's been given jersey number five, so the P5 nickname remains true. He's teaming up with Wendell Carter Jr., uh, and that's going to be a formidable front court for the Magic for years to come. We talk about the next two guys selected. You had Mark Williams going at 15 to Charlotte and A.J. Griffin going 16 to the Atlanta Hawks. When we last spoke, and a lot of people going into the draft, Kevin, thought those guys would be lottery guys. It didn't quite work out that way. They're the first two picks right outside of the lottery, but still pretty awesome to see those guys go top 20. Still first-round picks. Still going to be getting a lot of money uh, playing professional basketball now in the NBA. But to Mark to Charlotte and AJ to Atlanta. Yeah, I think the Mark Williams to Charlotte thing, that was – I mean, everyone really had that pinned. It was just going to be – what pick was it, 13 or 15? And Charlotte kind of wheeled and dealed. Jalen Duran, I think, gets flipped around to the Knicks and now lands with the Pistons. Um, and then they land on Williams at 15, which is, I mean, the smart orga- organizational move. You can pick you can pick somebody, trade them around, get a couple of picks and stuff back for them. And then you get the guy that you always wanted two picks later. Um, I think that's going to work perfectly. The pick and rolls between LaMelo Ball and Mark Williams are going to be something really to watch in the NBA yeah. this year. I think those are going to be special. And the A.J. Griffin of the Hawks, again, I think a lot of people thought he would be a top 10 pick. Um, I don't think any – maybe it wasn't a reason why he slid down to 16, but I think the knee injuries have to have something to do with that. 
but I think he lands in a good spot. I mean, the Hawks struggled, especially at the beginning of the year this year, but you look two years ago, they went all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, he's not going to be asked to do anything crazy. Um, I think he's going to be asked to be a spot-up shooter and space the floor, and that's something he can do. And obviously, we also know that when he gets that space, he does have the ability to put the ball on the deck and get to the rim. So I think there are two really good landing spots for the both of them. Kevin Connolly is our guest today, the site expert from Ball Durham. Check out their work, balldurham.com, for all things Duke men's basketball, Duke athletics. It's a one-stop shop for all of that. So make sure you check out and support that website. So uh, let's keep moving forward, talking about the NBA draft. Wendell Moore Jr. goes 26. So amazing, so thrilled for him that he was a first-round selection. I really think he's going to be able to contribute at the next level. I think Minnesota gets one hell of a player in Wendell, who's so versatile on the defensive end, as we've talked so frequently about, a 9% increase in three-point percentage from his sophomore to junior season up to a 41% clip, which is nothing to laugh about. That's really impressive stuff from Wendell. And then you've got Trevor Keels, who goes 42nd to the New York Knicks. So Duke, unfortunately, does not get five first-round picks, but they still set a program record with five for, or five draft picks in this year's draft. So Wendell to Minnesota and then New York, or excuse me, Trevor to New York. Yeah, Wendell Moore, I think uh, early in his career, I think he's going to be a 3 and D guy. I mean, you talked about how how great of an increase his three-point shooting was from, I mean, just even look from his freshman year, um, especially now to his junior year. I think that's what he's going to be this year and in the next couple of years with Minnesota. I wouldn't be surprised if he spent some time in the G League with the Timberwolves this year just to try and get him that constant playing time and that constant experience. But you look at Minnesota, I mean, they're one of the rising up-and-coming teams in the NBA. They made that surprise run um, to the play-in tournament. And they have two franchise cornerstones, you'd think, in Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. So Wendell's not going to be asked to lead the team. Um, he is a leader, but I think he could be a really good 3 and D guy um, in this first couple of years in the NBA. And you look at Trevor Keels, that was really the big question mark coming into this. Um, should he come back to Duke? Well, should he stay in the draft? He goes down to literally the last hours, and he stays in the draft, and then it's all right. He stayed in the draft. Did someone give him that first round guarantee? And I mean, NBA teams lie all the time. I hate to say it, but that's that's the reality of things. So maybe he did get that guarantee. Maybe he didn't. But I, ultimately, landing in New York's not a bad spot. Um, it was the only pick the Knicks retained. So he makes draft pick of, of the evening. And you think about it. I mean, everyone talks about the Knicks with wheeling and dealing. Keels in order to um, potentially groom him and trade away some of their younger players like an Emmanuel Quickly or a Quentin Grimes or somebody like that saying a Donovan Mitchell trade and then Trevor Keels steps in and he could be a really good player for the Knicks um, maybe not this year I think again he's going to spend some time in the G League um, but I think uh, he's going to be a really good player under Tom Thibodeau because he just has that bully mentality and can he step up his game defensively and be a really good rotational player for the Knicks is the big question. We, we've got a lot of questions to answer with the New York Knicks. We still, I, I want to see a little bit more playing time for Cam Reddish who came yeah. over halfway through the year last year, but the idea of having RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish and Trevor Keels, they're wearing the Knicks jerseys is really exciting. Madison square garden has always been a venue. That's been a home away from home from Cameron indoor stadium. And now they're getting to call that their professional home which is just super exciting. Let's talk a little bit more about Duke men's basketball, Coach Shire, and, and other things on the other side of this break here on Locked on Blue Devils. Today's episode of Locked on Blue Devils is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders parts on their computer choosing the only brand and specifications that their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with direct access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. So utilize that. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are always reliably low for every customer. They have everything that you could need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your auto parts needs. 
Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on. And then how did you hear about us, Fox? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com. As we want to welcome you back in here to Locked On Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson alongside Kevin Connolly from Ball Durham. All right, I want to kind of put a bow on this NBA draft discussion, and let's talk about it from this angle, Kevin. How awesome is it? We saw uh, over the weekend John Shire sent out a tweet uh, talking about how much respect he had for Mike Krzyzewski as all the Coach K drafts are now in the books. And for Coach K, who sent more players in the NBA more than any other coach in the history of college basketball to have five, his personal record in his last season. I mean, I think it's super special how all that came to be. Yeah, it kind of was really the bow on his career almost. I mean, I don't think a lot of people were talking about it, how this will be this was the last draft that Mike Krzyzewski was going to send players into the NBA. But he ends up having a program record five players drafted. And to boot, he gets the number one overall pick as well. So um, I guess maybe the season didn't end. Uh, how many wanted it to, but certainly um, this last little part of his career certainly go. He goes out with a bang with uh, four first round picks, five players selected, and he gets a number one overall pick too. So pretty good way to end a remarkable career. John Shire and Emil Jefferson were present there in the green room. We actually saw Chris Kirwell and Nolan Smith were with uh, Wendell Moore Jr. when he was getting drafted. So coaches continuing to support all those guys. ESPN airs the video that Coach K had made for Paulo immediately after he was the number one pick. And again, this is what John Shire had to say on Twitter at John Shire. 73 draft picks, 43 first-round picks, 29 lottery picks, and four number one overall picks. As I reflect on the NBA draft, it's another reminder of the incredible run that Coach K and Duke have had in helping young men reach their ultimate dream, hearing their names called on draft night. It was an honor to be there in person to hear Paulo, Mark, A.J. Wendell, and Trevor's names called. Each of them stepped on campus a year ago with a commitment to their teammates, their individual progress, and winning. As we start our first week of workouts with the new team, I'm reminded that legacy continues and our values, our commitment to player development, and the unparalleled platform that Duke has to offer. Hashtag brotherhood forever. I'm excited. Here we are. The John Shire era has kicked off. And, Kevin, we're already seeing footage of these guys in practice a little bit getting some summer workouts in. Uh, they had their first team meeting. Tyrese Proctor, the only player absent from that, he's still over in Australia and will be coming to Durham in short order. But uh, here we are. It's time to get this new squad ready to rock and roll. Yeah, it really is. It's amazing in terms of like the college landscape, how fast things change over. I mean, late June, mid-June, and uh, we're already into the new season. Everyone's already on campus, and uh, this team has the potential. They have the the – veteran leadership now. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, quickly mesh together. So we're talking about what's next for the Stupens basketball program. And now we're putting a bow on, on those guys that were drafted. They will now get ready for summer league. That'll start the second week of July. They're in Las Vegas. We've also seen Theo John from last year's team got a summer league deal with his hometown, Minnesota Timberwolves, which is really exciting. So you'll see Wendell Moore Jr. and Theo John there. And then also Jack White has got a summer league deal with the Denver Nuggets. Jack has been playing professionally over in Australia. He's been teammates with the likes of Matthew Della Vadova, who won the 2016 NBA championship playing with LeBron James Cavaliers. And so he's been around good basketball, a good basketball league for Jack White, whose career finished a few seasons ago. Another Australia for the Duke team, Australian, I should say. We got Tyrese Proctor coming in. But Theo John and Jack White get the opportunity to play some summer league basketball, Kevin. Yeah, it should be exciting. And that doesn't even include the second-year players. Right. Um, that, that'll be in the summer league. I mean, I would imagine you'll have your Vernon Carey Juniors and um, Jalen Johnsons. I would I would imagine Matt Hurt will be on a summer league team as well. So yeah. you also have those, those, those second-year guys and also those guys who um, maybe don't have that veteran experience and, and, and those minutes in the NBA. So uh, it's going to be a busy summer for those former Blue Devils in Vegas. And I think there's those two-day summer leagues and I think uh, California as well with the – and um, I think Utah. So um, summer league gets started in just a couple of days here, so it should be exciting. And you always wonder um, how long, like, uh, the Palos would play 
in a summer league. Typically, they'll get them a couple of games and, and then they'll give them the quick hook if they're not in contention for a championship. Or even if they are in contention for a championship, they'll get that quick hook and they'll say, we'll see you in training camp. So um, certainly those first couple games, they'll always have that hype. Uh, I think whenever Paulo would schedule to play Chet and uh, Jabari Smith, just because of how much conversation there was between the three of them for going one, two, and three in whatever order you might have thought they should have uh, been selected. So uh, Summer League always has that ex- uh, that excitement to build you up for the regular season. I'm excited. I'm glad it's building me up for the regular season. We love hoops. It's something to talk about throughout the summer, and so we'll definitely keep our eye on that. All right, let's take our final break on the show. And on the other side, a really cool story to check out, balldurham.com. We're going to talk about that. Kevin Connolly, our guest, here on today's edition of Locked On Blue Devils. All right, this Wednesday edition of Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by our partners over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Final few moments here today alongside Kevin Connolly, the site expert from Ball Durham. And before we get into anything too specifically, Kevin, if someone is listening to us chat for the first time here, uh, give us a rundown of what Ball Durham is exactly and, and where folks can find all your work. So you can find everything at balldurham.com. You can follow us on Twitter at ball underscore Durham. And anything you want, Duke Athletics, we have it. I mean, obviously, it's mainly focused on uh, Duke men's basketball, but we also get up stuff on football, baseball, anything big that's going on in the Duke athletic world. Um, follow recruiting heavily, and as well as uh, the guys playing professionally um, in the NBA, overseas, and any other um, professional sports league as well that um, do something that needs some notoriety. So um, if you want to find us, balldurham.com, and then you can follow us on Twitter at ball underscore uh, Durham. It's terrific because during the season, a lot of people you know, are so plugged into what's going on with the current college team and maybe have their eye on a couple of NBA players. There are still Duke basketball players who are playing overseas. Like we just mentioned, Jack White a little bit ago was playing in Australia, and you guys do an outstanding job of running through, looking at the site each day. It's like, oh, yeah, I forgot this guy was over here playing and uh, appreciate all the updates that we get to see uh, from the Duke uh, community and Duke basketball players wherever they might be playing. All right, so this is the Wednesday edition of our show, and I want to talk about a a story that was posted yesterday. I'll read the headline that you put out there, Kevin. You kind of give us the scoop here. But uh, Duke basketball, John Shire blatantly disrespected by opposing coaches. What can you tell me? Yeah, so it was something that, I, you know, you're reading along, and um, on three sports they do an outstanding job at covering um, specifically recruiting. And they had an article serving a bunch of anonymous coaches. And the question was, who do you fear most on the recruiting trail? So, you know, it's kind of like that discreet trash talk between coaches. And and you kind of love that stuff. So, you know, you you give it a read. And um, I have my my notes in front of me from the story. It was four SEC coaches, three Big 12 coaches, two Pac-12 coaches, three Atlantic 10 coaches, and one ACC coach were polled. So 13 total coaches were polled, and only one of those coaches anonymously said that they feared John Shire the most, and it was an Atlantic 10 coach. And I really couldn't believe that because, I mean, you look at Shire, and in the 247 Sports Basketball Recruiter rankings, he's been number one since 2020, and since taking over for Mike Krzyzewski, he's landed, let's see, seven five-star recruits, three four-star recruits, and a one-star recruit. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And if no one's getting, uh, if no one's shaking in their boots when they see him coming around and uh, on, on the sidelines recruiting players, then uh, well, I guess more power to them. But it doesn't seem like they win those uh, recruiting battles very often. Yeah, I mean, what are we doing at this point? This is kind of crazy to sit there and think about. Uh, again, I thought it is important as you just kind of gave an overview of the coaches that were polled in this, and only one is in the ACC, a couple in the SEC, and so you kind of look at the recruiting footprint. 
but there are really good programs all over the place. And obviously, I would imagine John Calipari gets a lot of love uh, for what he's been able to do. It, it's got to be a matter of, okay, we're not just not used to John Shire being the head coach for Duke. But what we have to keep reminding people is, look, we've never seen something like this before. Where is a time that a coach has walked in with no college basketball coaching experience ever and has the number one class his first year on the job and currently has the number one class and what would be going into year number two? I mean, this is unprecedented, and yet we're still walking into a little bit of disrespect. And it's not like he's slowing down either. I yeah. mean, they've, they, they're well in the mix for a bunch of top guys in 2024 as well. And even 2025, you look at the Boozer twins, uh, Cooper Flag. I mean, they're, they're not slowing down. So, uh, yeah, I found that interesting. You mentioned John Calipari. He, he received, I guess, the most votes from these anonymous coaches. Three of them responded with Calipari. Um, Leonard Hamilton got two votes, which was tied for the second highest, which I was a little surprised with okay. um, next next to Bruce Pearl. And yeah, you saw a lot of those SEC guys, I guess, with four SEC coaches uh, being pulled. They, they had a couple uh, SEC answers. And then Kenny Payne also got a vote, which I was um, a little surprised about, speaking of guys with um, no head coaching experience at the college ranks. So um, yeah, it was, just, it was just strange. I mean, someone who has been dominating the recruiting trail, not just in his short time as a head coach, but also as the main assistant for Duke. And uh, I guess a lot of people don't fear him, but they can, they can take that peril at their own will. Yeah. I mean, look, I think that's the best way to put it. Take that peril at your own will, because you, you, uh, I promise you the Stoop team is going to be pretty special this upcoming season and years to come, as long as they keep recruiting at this level. Look, development is going to be the next piece in this. And we haven't seen coach Shire uh, necessarily run a program the way he wants to. He's got the great staff that he put together. Lucas coming over from Kentucky, uh, but it's just so fascinating to kind of read that story and, and be, again, what are we doing here? Uh, you mentioned only two guys not having any coaching experience at all. Kenny Payne at Louisville now has Nolan Smith on his staff. So they'll continue to be competitive in the recruiting world because we'll tip our cap to Nolan and what he was able to do as a recruiter itself. But in 2023, Duke had the commitment of Tyrese Proctor, he reclassifies, will be coming to school earlier than expected. And what does John Shire do? Well, he says, we're not finished in 2023 then. Let me still go kind of reload and find the next big guy. I know Xavier Booker is a name that a lot of people are watching in that class, but it, it really is a, a matter of, a, all right, disrespect us all you want to. We'll continue to prove you wrong, it feels like. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that 2023 class isn't done yet. It seems like they're going to add at least one more big man. Um, which you'd expect because this team is going to have a couple of big guys that are probably one and done. You look at Derek Lively, Kyle Filipowski. Um, you're not sure about Mark Mitchell, but you could definitely see him being a one and done as well. So um, they're going to need, need to add some uh, bulk to that front line uh, for that 2023 team. Amazing stuff. Balldurham.com is your one-stop shop for all things Duke basketball. Go and check it out. Kevin Connolly, our guest here today, on the program. Kevin, the time is always greatly appreciated. Remind folks where they could find your work and maybe tell us what your plan is for the website over the next few days, few weeks, whatever you'd like to promote. The time is yours. Yeah. So we're going to have a lot of uh, summer league action. We talked about it a little bit here. We're going to, we're going to dive right in head first into the summer league uh, pool, just like we talked about here. Um, you can find everything at balldurham.com. And then on Twitter, you can follow us ball underscore Durham. And as July, as summer league kind of winds down in that mid July, um, then we turn our attention uh, to this team. We'll have a lot of uh, predictions, previews. Um, we'll get into that like starting lineup debate: who's going to be the five that take the floor on opening night? Um, rotational pieces. How how's everything going to match out there? So um, yeah, for these next couple of weeks in July, it's going to be a ton of summer league action. And again, not just the. Uh, five guys that got drafted. It's a bunch of second and third year guys that have been out of Duke for a while. We'll have, we'll be on top of all that. And then we get, we get ready for the season. And then also we got to get ready for football, football season too, because Mike Elko has been on a recruiting tear for 2023. Yeah. Exciting. Football season is almost here. Basketball season will be back in short order, counting down the days until all the excitement takes place. Kevin, again, thank you so much for being here and uh, looking forward to catching up again soon. Okay. JJ, appreciate it. That is Kevin Connolly. Again, on Twitter, at Kevin Connolly 24 And check out Ball Durham 
for all their amazing stuff. That's going to do it for our show. Make sure you follow and subscribe on whatever podcast platform you so choose. Like this video on YouTube, share it with your friends, and now go check out the Locked On NBA podcast. They're doing a great job right now of recapping the draft, previewing NBA free agency. A couple of Duke guys are could have new homes this time next week. So go find all of that with the Locked On NBA podcast. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.